minute, Brooke. He never got over it, and he never will. You misunderstood. No, please don't insult my intelligence. Why else would you be here the night before my wedding? Maria, please. No, give me a chance. no, we don't have anything to discuss, Brooke. We don't. We don't have anything in common except that we both love Edmund Gray. And I'm marrying him tomorrow. And I have no intention of discussing him or his former relationship with you tonight. If you could just give me five minutes. If you can't sleep because you have to discuss this, if you just have got to get this off your chest, then maybe you should just take it over to Wild Wind. Okay? Because Edmund is probably over there by now. And you guys can go and rehash the past until the cows come home. And then tomorrow morning, why don't you just give me a call and let me know what you want to do and whether or not I should show up to the church or anything. And that would really be okay with you? No, but it would be better than standing here and listening to you go on and on about how you love him and you want him and you can't get over if him. If I promise blah, 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 not blah. to go on and on, will you at least let me say what I came here to say? You can do it in one sentence. Okay. Maria, I owe you an apology. Remember that day that you came? to my office to congratulate me on the quicksand story. But really, it, it was because Edmund had asked you to marry him. And I wanted to know if you were really through with him. And I told you I was. Very convincingly, and remember? I believed you. So did I, Maria, because I wanted to believe that. I was working so hard to believe in my marriage. I mean, I needed to believe that Tad and I loved each other and that our family was strong and secure. But I was wrong. And everybody knows now that I'm fooling myself. And, and Tad never really stopped loving Dixie. And what I felt for Edmund, it just, it, it wouldn't go away. No matter how hard I tried. Is this supposed to be making me feel better, Brooke? Is it? Because if that's what you're trying to do, it's not working. I'm sorry. I... You know, when you, when you accused me of going after Edmund, and I told you that I wasn't... I meant that, too. I did. It's just that he was the only person that I could go to for comfort. It was like he, his voice was the only one I could listen to when I was in trouble. I know that. And if I hadn't listened to him at the end, I would have died. What I'm leading up to, Maria, is that if Edmund had wanted to be back then, I mean, if, if, if he had wanted another chance with me, I would have found it very hard to say no to him, even impossible, but he never did. He never did. The only thing that he offered me was friendship. Look, I, I really, if I made another, another mistake coming here tonight, I'm sorry. It's just that I wanted you to know when you and Edmund exchange vows tomorrow, it's very clear that there is no doubt in his mind or in my mind that he loves you. Only you. More than anybody else in the world. I'll go. No, wait. I really can't stay. Jamie's with the sitter. But it's late and Jamie's asleep. So why don't you just stay for a little while and, and uh, have some tea and we can, we can talk. I mean, my, my mom made some really great triple fudge brownies that won a blue ribbon at the fair last year. That's very nice of you. I, I just I don't think I can do this right now. Okay. But um, about what you said, I, I know that you meant what you said and I appreciate why you said it, but I don't want to think of my life in terms of winning or losing. So I, I don't want you to think that you have to bow out completely. I'm not that dumb or insecure. I never thought that you were. Look, Brooke, you, you gave me an incredible gift tonight. And let me, let me give you something back. Why don't just, just stay for a little while and have some tea. 
triple fudge. <laughs> yeah, um, the walnuts were picked right off of my grandmother's tree. They're pretty good. Mm. Mm. I'll go put on the kettle. Okay. Oh, Maria, there's uh, somebody at the door. Oh, my sister forgets her keys all the time. Could, could you get it? Oh, sure. Sure. What are you doing here? Well, what's going on? Edmund, don't jump to conclusions. I can't conclusion. think of a single good reason for you to be in Maria's apartment the night before our wedding. Don't worry, I... Where is she? I put the kettle on, it should be... Edmund. I am surprised that you came back. You're surprised? What's going on? You guys having a tea party? Orange Pico or Jasmine? Uh, Jasmine. Somebody gonna clue me in? I think probably Brooke can do a better job of that than I can. Wait a minute, where do you think you're going? Well, I'm going to the room where I have something very important to do with the door shut. So... If the kettle starts to whistle, will somebody turn it off? Okay. Start explaining. I thought we agreed, Brooke. Everything's over. Edmund, I didn't come here to... I was home. I was going through some things, and I came across that beautiful letter that you you wrote me the night before I married Tad. I saved it. I hope that's all right. Of course, it's all right. Good, because even though marrying Tad was the stupidest thing that I, I ever did in my life, when I read that letter, I, I realized that you wanted my marriage to work for my sake. And that you cared enough about me. And that my happiness was more important than your own, and you let me know that. And that's why I came to see Maria. I wanted to be as classy as you were in that letter. Because your happiness will always be important to me. And when you and Maria exchange vows tomorrow, I just want to wish you my best. Uh, you tell her I, I can't really stay for tea. Tell her I'm sorry. Maybe another time. She left. Um, she said to tell you that she's sorry about the tea and everything. Brooke is quite a person. I know what you saw in her now. Please bless Brooke, too. Please bring her the kind of happiness that I've found with Edmund. Amen. Anyway, next up, the latest development in the Brooke, Maria, and Edmund triangle on All My Children. And this is one that the fans are really vocal about. The traditionalists feel that Edmund and Brooke will always belong together. And then there are those that say, how can Edmund resist Maria's charms? And no one is any more confused than poor Edmund. Well, on today's show, it's time for Brooke and Maria to exchange notes about the upcoming wedding. He was the only person that I could go to for comfort. It was like he, his voice was the only one I could listen to when I was in trouble. I know that. And if... I hadn't listened to him at the end. I would have died. 
what I'm leading up to, Maria, is that if Edmund had wanted to be back then, I mean, if, if, if he had wanted another chance with me, I would have found it very hard to say no to him, even impossible, but he never did. He never did. The only thing that he offered me was friendship. Look, I, I really, if I made another, another mistake coming here tonight, I'm sorry. It's just that I wanted you to know when you and Edmund exchange vows tomorrow, it's very clear that there is no doubt in his mind or in my mind that he loves you. You know, I've always loved the character of Brooke. She's somebody that I, I could be my girlfriend. And she's always got her head together, even when she went off the deep end recently here. <laughs> even and, that, Even that. And, and here, she's, what a generous gesture to go What a great her. wedding gift. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it, she's wonderful. I don't believe her for a second. Oh, but. I do. <laughs> when, John, when John Callahan, who plays Edmund, was recently in town, that intrepid reporter, Shelley Taylor Morgan, <laughs> asked him if there might just be wedding bells in Edmund's future. And if anyone should know, it would be Edmund. Well, his heart is still with Brooke, but every other part of his body. <laughs> Any storyline predictions? Um, there will be a wedding. Yes, but we're not saying to whom? It's supposed to be to Maria. Look at the hills. There's little nuggets he's throwing in there. You know, he and I used to be partners in crime on General Hospital, so that was a quick little reunion for him and I.